fight away, and that's not going to be really any opportunities here. We get to watch how the rest of the laning phase goes here in this one. Of course, a blue buff steal is nice, and also Edge with a momentary lead, momentary lead in the mid lane over Po Belter means a 500 gold first blood is a 100 gold lead for Immortals. And we get to kind of work out this Gragas pick, because now we're taken aback. Two picks this tournament have stuck out like sore thumbs. They were Talia on the first day of the tournament. We didn't think that was going to be in the meta, especially not before some of the buffs and later patches come through. And now the Gragas, that is kind of the forgotten man of the jungle. A lot of junglers kind of plied their trade on Gragas every game, and then suddenly it was completely gone with one change, specifically yeah. the tweak to the ultimate. And you know, I was talking to a lot of the world's casters before, and they said there's a small chance we'll see Gragas because people worked out you could ult flash because of the fixed duration of the uh, throw of the cask now, the 0.75 duration, you can ult flash and get the old interaction that you could guarantee with flash ult. It's harder to do, it's more gimmicky, but it's still possible. So I'm gonna be kind of tracking after level six whether we see Dardog go for that ult flash. More mechanics required, but mechanics were one thing you never questioned about Dardog. Yes. This man is a mechanical beast. Definitely always a uh, strength of his, and we'll see if he can keep getting more of those. Immortals back to a 400 gold lead as we just kind of trade minions back and forth, but Flame should be in a good spot to continue his advantage, but this time around, he can't carry on the cannon. He's playing a big tank, so he's got to do more for the team than just solo kill people. I kind of liked how the analyst desk before we started was really talking about, you know, expectations for Flame, because Flame is a name that will never leave the League of Legends vocabulary. Flame Horizon, coined by Monty and Doa, is one of the most iconic uh, phrases, the 100 CS advantage. And it wasn't just that he did it once, of course, he was famous for getting those big advantages. CJ would set up the slow push, his Shivana will get a 100 CS lead, and from there the game was over. That's not the flame you see anymore. The flame that's played the last two years when we've seen him has become much more of a team player, much more about the ability to teleport in. In fact, if I talk about his strengths, it'd be tank play and flank teleports, which isn't the flame that kind of revolutionized the scene that people remember so fondly. But he's a very, very good team player now, and I actually have more question marks about whether he can be a top lane carry when the meta shifts than about his tank play, because his tank play is top tier. Absolutely agree. He's definitely a strong player. We'll see what else he can do in this one. His immortals just, well, looking for the mid lane gank is punch the flash knockups. Actually, I think he might have missed on Pobel too. That didn't really uh -oh. seem to do very much. And now the turnaround gank is maybe here. Tardock gets the body time into the barrel, into the kill. 2-0 on Immortals, new jungler. That's very much the same story as yesterday. NA versus KR, both semifinals. And Kongdu, a bit too keen on the gank, like you caught, Freak. The flash engage from punch didn't work. And we have to talk about how. The stakes are now higher. Punch played in Challenger, played in Promotions, played in Kesper Cup, but now in an international tournament on a big stage here in Gyeonggi. Very big difference between the flash knockup and the missing, and the answering kill comes from Immortals. Of course, very well played there. Dardoch showing up in time to capitalize on the mistake for every misplay. There's got to be something good done by the other team to make it turn into something else. And right now, we're seeing advantages in lots of different places. you got to point out that Soul up 14 minions right now in his bottom lane, doing definitely very well for himself. So we're going to see the replay. I think this is already kind of a big engagement. Yeah, that's confirmed. I think he unburrowed first. I think it was an unburrow flash instead of flash right click. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the ways to read that. I have to watch it again just to make sure, but obviously very clear that the flash unburrow didn't happen. His bot lane, Soul's exhaust. just down. And actually down a heal is Soul. I think uh, Ole actually landed a great stun, and that's what required extra summoners out. So despite the CS disadvantage, the items are actually a bit better for Immortals. Cole definitely does more damage than a tier. And of course, that tier will continue to stack up. The Ezreal will get more powerful. Looks for the stun, not going to land it. Soul playing far enough away. And one of the differences between today and yesterday is looking to get the assassination on Cody son. Uh, I think Cody son's going to be okay. He's got heal still, docks behind a minion. And keep in mind, of course, he's got the uh, Warlock's Bloodlust Keystone anyway, so the sustain should be enough to be fine here, especially when you're leaning with a Bard. Let's get a kind of pass here, Sol. He's gone for the tier first, predictable on the Ezra. We saw Sheen first on some Ezra play yesterday, but he's only against Cull from the Ash. Not a BF sword, not a pickaxe, yeah. not a pressure buy. So actually getting more breathing room in the Ezreal Ash matchup than usual is Soul in this particular bot lane. Yeah, and of course it was a recall dictated by Soul. They had the lane pressure, they had the push lead. They said, yep, we're gonna go for the tier recall that we know is too early for you to buy BF Sword. So the matched item was only Cole and Boots, as you had uh, mentioned before again. Now the thing is, Ash could have gone for something like Double Longsword if she knew she was gonna go for Essence Reaver first, which I think is fine if you're playing the utility carry on the squad. And that gives you a bit more damage than Cole would have by itself and would have given a bit more lane pressure, but chose for the slower one, which is Cole Boots. And 
you and know, maybe you saw the trades go okay for Soul. And maybe, maybe now we have to spec that it will be kind of the New Age Ash build because it feels like Oni Prey is still going for the Essence Reaver Hurricane build that he innovated, that he was using at Worlds. Infinity Edge has been pretty common otherwise, as we know that Rek'Sai has been around the bot lane. Uh, you know, We're without getting those, maybe. without getting the power spike of the long swords, maybe not worth going for that build as Ole spots out the Rek'Sai. Fight rewards, they both die. Cody Sun got away from the gank, and of course with Dardock coming around as well, it made sure that they were all safe. So that time from punch doesn't mean much. A one-level lead for Dardock in the jungle. So the longer that Soul can keep Cody Sun in lane, the more likely they can get the first Drake. So crucial when it's an Infernal on the Recooks. Cody Sun is still sitting on really low combat stats, although... Sun and a Cougar gonna land a lot of the damage. One more hit will do it. There's the cast. There's the kill picked up by Dardock. Looking for something else, though. He's gonna be able to get away. No, he's not. Nicely done by Roach. TP's in in time to turn it back around. A one for one. Flame did start, but then canceled his teleport, so he has a little bit of free time in that top lane. Poppy was able to pull back, so Flame was late. Communication, predictably, not 100% in this squad. So really nice TP player, was able to heroic charge away from the magical journey, so vindicates the TP, but they don't get any more from it, Freak, and they're gonna lose turret damage in top. The other thing is, is actually, this is really big. The fact that this bot lane turret's taking so much damage is a huge deal, because Flame getting two to three free mini waves off of the top side, almost pays for a kill in itself when you count the turret damage coming in sure. as well. A lot of times, we saw this actually from Samsung, where Kube would just not match the teleport, and one kill for a TP didn't tend to mean all that much when you got three waves of farm on the other side of the map, but bot lane winning by so hard is a big deal, of course. I would have liked to see Poach stay bot, the punch, sorry, stay bot, just to guarantee this turret. Looks like Ezreal will stay for it. Ash had to recall once again, because yeah. no combat stats, was very risky to overstay in lane, and there was pressure from Punch in the bot side, so it will be first brick yep. over to Concrete Monster. And that makes it worth it after all. If that turret didn't go down, it's a more questionable trade, but the fact that they got this largely because of the kill earlier, huge deal, nicely done, and that is Kongdu Monster feeling good at the 700 gold lead. And only the last bit vindicates what looked on paper like an overinvestment in the te yep. in the teleport. Because only getting an answer and kill is not enough. However, Infernal Drake, sure it is an investment for the future, but they're gonna attempt it because they saw the recall. Punch is in vision, they know he's around, but Immortals, they're DPSing down this Drake. And Dardock is a great smiter. Odds are he lands this, but Punch can still go for the steal. Asher are going to land on a Punch, going to go for the engage. Shockwave catches as well. A bit of punishment, but not enough to kill him off. And Petrifying Gaze from Edge buys a bit more time, but no one else left in range. Ezreal! Nicely played Dardock low. Ooh. Ezreal doesn't quite kill him off. I put are incredibly injured. A Q from Punch, but actually kill him! Ooh. Nice job with the, uh, the shield right there. Punch actually burning his flash, expecting that Command Protect wasn't up. And with all the time spent with Roach going down, Flame should be able to answer the turret kill plus his 15 minion lead for as much as bot lane is winning for Kong Du, Immortal is winning just as much top lane. Oh boy, okay, we take a breath finally, we can reassess, sure, the kill lead is there, but overall, actually, the gold is basically even between the two, so you'd have to give the slight advantage to the Infernal Drake yep. that Immortals have picked up. Really intriguing early game. Immortals, just like Team Liquid yesterday, look more polished in the early game, the decision making, it's really their jungle movements. We saw a big lead for Reyna. We see a big lead for Dardock in this game. But how much will it matter? I don't know if it matters that much. The fact is the gold is still equal and an early Infernal Break is not huge. It's Bo Belter and Cody Sun being out lane, just like we saw with Liquid, where they were kind of losing all their lanes as well as far as farm counts were considered. And that is always really huge. You can't look at the kill score. The gold score more important. And I feel like Kongdu Monster, even if they're technically losing via scoreboard, have the edge right now. Now let's look at Immortals and, as and assume that we don't fall into the same trap that it always goes. Obviously, the Fisher and Pulse were talking about it. The standard uh, way that these matches go is that the you know, NA teams find it hard to close out the game in the late game. If you actually consider equal shot core in the late game, scaling is really nice on the side of Immortals, especially yes. with that Infernal Drake. But Maokai outscales Poppy on average. Uh, Oriana certainly does outscale Cassiopeia, and Ash versus Ezra is kind of a wash, but Immortals have the slight scaling advantage because of the Maokai in particular. Yeah. Infernal Drake is another investment towards that scaling. So if they can just play their game, they don't have earlier power spikes like Team Liquid did in that game one. There's still a world where Immortals just win late game team fights. Definitely a possibility here, so we'll see if they can do it. It's always a tough road up against Kongdu Monster, who had some very good late games in the past, especially watching some of their Casper Cup games. They had a great comeback win over Rocks Tigers in game one of that final, and that was late game team footing and some pretty impressive prowess. So maybe that Kung Fu Monster reapplies itself here.
But otherwise, yes, we are in a, a, a close game. We've got to give both teams a fair shake on this one. Nice trade in the top lane. Flame versus Broach. Kondu putting their forces towards the mid side of the map. Dardak wants a bit more. Not going to find the kill on the punch, though. And doesn't pull the trigger on his ultimate. Good for pressure around mid lane. Ooh, that's Asha arrow. landing onto a tank, and yeah, no one is there to follow up. I think he was hoping it was Gugger. Didn't land on that target, and if it's not Karma, out they go. And just with the distance, it probably was a teleport, though. It's a really deep one. It's a very ambitious TP flag. I don't think anyone's in range for that at all. So Roach burning a five minute cooldown. Smart by Immortals to make sure they went to the left hand side. If they did go through that choke, through that brush, and didn't see the TP coming, they maybe could have gotten popped up and killed, but. Good enough awareness by Immortals to get away from the gank path. The ward was just about to time out, so maybe Roach got a bit high fee. He was like, oh, this is the only time I can go. We can do this. They might go that way. They didn't. Of course, as you mentioned, a long cooldown is wasted for no gain. He just has to walk, saunter his way up to the top lane as the minion wave is pushed in. Gonna be pressure around mid lane. Ezreal's out of position. They turn off the turret. The flash to not quite gonna land by Ole. It's a flash follow by Guga to kind of get himself out. So a trade of flashes and an ultimate down. Looking for the play on to Cassidy. He won't quite find that there. Roach has to roam back down. Immortal sitting with five in the mid lane, not getting much. Bit of a small mistake. Edge actually flashed early, and if this was the previous Gragas where you, there was no animation between flash ult, you could understand it. But given the new Gragas ult, you can comfortably flash during the duration of the cast throw. So I think too much respect for the situation, or perhaps just nerves, means that Edge now no longer has flash. That's, of course, an important cooldown to deal with. Now Gragas can go for the easy follow. We know Cody Sun's ulti is back available, and it's something that I really like about what Immortals have drafted here is every single person on this Immortal squad has some hard crowd control. I've seen so many games where a team has the advantage, but no way to push the issue, no way to bait opponents in and then catch them out, or like the only catch is a Malphite ultimate on a two minute cooldown. This time around, Immortals have a plethora of ways to kill someone off. And I like this drafting up. Oh, nice That's try. Right. I like this drafting specifically when you're a new roster because if you only have a single engage tool, when you have mixed language, when you have low synergy because you haven't had time, that person's off, suddenly you don't engage, suddenly the game goes long and Korean team outscales. We've mm -hmm. seen that before. When everyone has engaged, someone's going to make that engage freak and then following up on someone's engage, much more straightforward. And yeah, the question though really becomes who can land the engage that they need. Ole tried with the ulti under the turret, couldn't land the Q because Guger flashed it. Cody Sun has had two unlucky, we can say, Ash arrows in a row. I mean, going for an Ezreal hard in the first place, maybe not the best target regardless, but have not found those openings in quite a while, Immortals. Now I actually wonder out loud, you know, considering what we were talking about, when you look on Immortals, the non-committal engage is Bard and Ash. You know, they don't have to get into melee range or yep. short range to be able to engage. Maybe the Essence Reaver build, getting to 30%, 40% CDR on the, on the Ash, and just exactly looking optimistically for picks means more than this hard DPS build. But then again, you have the question of, well, if Roach is in my face, I'd really like to kill him. Right. So it's kind of a, a mixed thing. Given how much follow-up engage, I think I would have preferred fishing for engage with 30, 40% CDR and specifically Essence Reaver into Hurricane. But you right. can kind of understand where he's coming from with the current build. I think it's definitely a debatable point. I, I agree that like, all of your reasons for why it's good are very much valid and true. The problem is, though, Immortals would otherwise then be on a one-carry team until third item Infinity Edge comes in for Cody Sun. It's just Poe Belter against double tank. I mean, and that's a single really carry hard. with a couple of Infernal Drakes, maybe it'll be all right. <laughs> I suppose so. That's a bit of a tenuous leap to go for. Starting out on the second Infernal Drake, Immortals going to kite it back because, of course, Kongi Monster are around. And Roach has teleport available in about one minute, has roamed to the mid lane to stop the Drake, and so Immortals going to split them up. Look for the stun. Oh. They're going to be able to land this fight, and that is Dardot getting the second Infernal. And you can see that Poppy is nowhere to be seen. Flame able to shove a couple of waves into the turret and get some free damage in that one, and that's the cost of the failed TP from Roach. He loses a couple of waves. That Flame just got to farm for free. And it's great to see Immortals in very much their early days, understanding they had that window of power with no teleport on Roach. Clearly, the timers, communication, that part pass marks for Immortals. They've now got two Infernals, the more you, most you could ask for in terms of investment banking with their particular lineup. And I guess it, you should know, it is only BF Sword Zeal. Now maybe there could even be a team discussion about where to go because he hasn't committed true. to either build part. He really can choose in this one what it's going to be. He'll finish the Hurricane, maybe Phantom Dancer, but I doubt it, and then go on from there for what they actually think they need. But you're right, that can be, that can be considered. And, I don't think either is objectively wrong, just changes the play style slightly. Ole, not going to find the stun onto Roach, though the team was around, didn't see him in time, I think, to go for the Q. 
and it's a rotation down to the bottom lane. Flame, 1v2 for the mid lane, 1v3 soon as uh, Punch is coming. And Looks uh, like Flame not being really contested here. Shockwave's gonna land, a little bit of damage here on a Roach, still slowed down by the dissonance. Here's the Magical Journey, they can land a little bit more CC, maybe they can force the Flash. It's not gonna be enough, just forcing him out of range, but that should still mean Bot Outer is a freebie for Immortals. Exactly, this still gets pressure and time for Cody Sun. What's happening on the map? We see Cassiopeia in top, looks to be able to take down a turret. It will take yeah. a while, obviously, but they'll answer it. Immortals have the inside track on an inner turret. Exactly. They're gonna keep going, and so far, Kongdo Monster out of position. And Immortals have a much larger minion wave as well. Certainly, it's enough here for Edge to get the kill off, but you're seeing Flame easily control mid lane. That true shot barrage helps a lot, but it should still mean a bot lane. Two turrets killed before the even the first one is dead in the outer uh, top lane there, so a good Allocation resource by Immortals. They played it right. They pushed out Roach so he couldn't wave clear, and that meant two turrets for one. What this means in the late game remains to be seen. Gragas also having all the gold when it comes to kills. It's not ideal. He'll be very, very tanky, but they already have Maokai to fill that role, and late game Gragas damage hasn't been tweaked. Still is very much on the low side, but you have to love specifically the Orion Ash and the unkillable frontline that we're putting together. Ezreal, even when he picks up Blade the Ruin King and Lord Dominic's going to take plenty of time to get through a front line and Cody Sun, you know, probably the biggest question mark on this roster in terms of current performance is on a utility carry, but will need to be a big damage threat in the late game. He's the only yes. one with true consistent damage. Absolutely agree. He's going to have to team fight well. And the one thing I've noticed from recently promoted challenger to LCS level 80 carries is their team fight mechanics are usually fine. That's one of the easier things to do, I think, once you're like a challenger solo queue AD carry. The difficulty is laning against the world's best and making smart choices in a nebulous mid game where games like this are nothing like the games you play in solo queue at home. And so if they just get in team fights, I think Cody Sun will perform just fine. But, and the rest of this, okay, he got down CS, but he's able to he's been able to land the rotations and and be part of the turret kills well enough. And it's worth noting that because his team has pressure and his ash, it's literally, I'm going to throw out an arrow and let's yep. go on it if it comes. It's very low risk play style for Cody. It's pretty hard for him to mess up unless he's just walking out of vision or not respecting what side of the map he should be on. So especially when you're winning or at least have pressure advantage in the mid game, so obviously the gold is still very much in touching distance. This should be comfort for Cody. Son. This yes. is basically uh, you know, a comfortable scrim so far, and only when Hongdu Monster actually find a window back in does that pressure instantly ratchet up and put the spotlight on Cody's side. It is still important that Immortals continue the pressure, though, and actually play aggressively enough to continue to grow advantages. They're only up one turret, only up two kills. The gold lead, shy of 2,000, so... As you mentioned, gold within touching distance. Yes, this is anybody's game to win right now. Small edge to Immortals, if they can keep this pressure on. Right now, playing the 1-3-1, one, one, Orianna clearing under her turret. Cody Sun playing smartly enough to not get caught out as far as the mid lane match is concerned. Zardok also playing defense, Ole doing something similar. We haven't said the dirty C word this game. It's been a big one this so far. Courage, Courage of the Colossus, in fact, yeah. is what I'm talking about there. Gragas, just to check in. I talked about how Olaf doesn't have Courage of the Colossus, so I'm not a big fan of him in the tank meta from the jungle right now, even if he's still a great duelist. Both Gragas's E and R, his dash and his ultimate, proc courage because they're hard CC, they're displacement effects. So he's able to use it. Soul is stunned. Yeah, a bit of an aggressive flash by Poether was expecting Soul to not arcane shift the arrow, but of course he's a good enough player to get that for sure. And Poether missing his flash for that. There's a knockback on a punch. Good damage. Shockwave not going to land in time. Wide. Unlucky there for Immortal Poether. Aggressive flash and a missed shockwave means nothing for two, three ultimates. And the big upside of going Trinity Force early 20% CDR, no CDR boots. So has that there. Was actually able to arcane shift both the base. Still has flash up, which is uh, pretty amazing given the CCs he had to respect. And now Kongdu Monster, they're trying to ratchet up the pressure instantly. Yeah, the tenacity to go for a Baron roughly in sight, but they know three missing ultimates means a fairly easy battle. And it's the quick jump away with the magical journey. Roach did teleport into flank and flame crucially held on to his, was confident enough that his team could force them off the Baron. Nice oh. attempt for the Flash Q, but of course an even better sidestep by Soul to get away from it. Ole, unable to find these crucial bindings. So to understand what happened there, they actually only started Baron because they had the flank ward they did around Red Buff. You know that because Punch actually smited the Baron for health at about you know, 8,000, obviously not anywhere near secure range because they thought they were going to turn and team fight and he wanted to be healthy. Second time that Roach's teleport doesn't pay any dividends. Boppy doesn't find a flank. 
nothing changes. So Hongdu using the Baron purely as a vessel to find an impressive team fight and fail to do so. And it was a smart idea. Three ultimates down. The next team fight is going to be your advantage. Let's pull the trigger as soon as possible. But sadly, Roach has not found the appropriate TP flanks, really. Now the fight for the mid lane outer turret, but enough CC that Flames got to be respectful of this one. Kites back, but down to only about 1400 HP. This is a squishy enough tank now that Edge could burn through him. And unfortunate for Immortals, good for Kong Du Monster. A low HP tank right as Dragon respawns. Looks like it's going to be Cloud, I think. And Kong Du Monster have the edge in going for it. Yeah, it's not an Infernal, so it's not the worst possible punish. Flame also. Sap Magic comes through. Suddenly, and a manageable health total. Cloud is taken. I know it's one of your favorites free. It is. It's good. Don't disagree, especially after the latest buffs, but the next Infernal will be up, and it's certainly going to be the fighting ground that Baron, Now, and Drake are both really high priority, because if you just get a casual 24% extra AP and AD for Cody, Sun, and Orianna, mm -hmm. that's pretty happy times for Immortals. Definitely would be. We'll see if that happens right here. Infinity Edge is going to be the completed build here for Cody, Sun. Just got it on the recall, so important to note, big power spike in for both Marksmen, actually, Sol now has Muramana himself to go with the Trinity Force and the cooldown boots. So uh, first really, really huge spike in for both these Marksmen. Should be, uh, you know, much more them-centric next fight. And I'm really excited to watch and track Sol in these late-game team fights. You saw in the pre-match interview, everyone was kind of the opinion, Sol, Sol, Sol. This guy is the man. He will be the hard carry. Went 17-2-8 and eight casually when he played up in the winner's bracket final uh, just a couple of days ago. Yeah, uh, in his group. And he's clearly a powerful player. He was good even when this team wasn't, and uh, when they were struggling back in spring, kept up a level performance in summer. You consider the team he's against, if he kites out the front line, sure, they'll take a long time to kill. Vicky can take time to kill. Yeah, Tardok tanky and now blocks away, but still low on HP, and here comes the chase in for Cassiopeia, and Soul gets the kill credit, doubles the kill score there. Team effort by Kongdu Monster, but that is a crucial pickoff on the opposing jungler. Uh, you say crucial, and while it's the smite down, it only matters if they get multiple objectives. Baron is the most difficult one. They move away from that completely. Red buff is a potential steal. Mid out of the turret will really open up some play around the map. So let's see how much Kongo can do. 20 seconds till Dardox back on the map. That looks pretty good. Flame gonna take up some auto attacks. They don't go for the turret instead. 500 HP left on mid lane outer. That'll be probably dead next wave. Dardox respawns at eight. More than enough time to push the next wave in and go for a few more auto attacks. You expect Kongdu Monster to get this one. Immortals really want to fight for this, but here comes the Roach flank. 5v4, the battle's big one. up in. A huge petrifying gaze. They picked off Cobelter. The, I don't know if there's much else to do on that one. The turret does go down, and Immortals, I think, uh, pretty silly, choose to defend a turret 4v5 when there's several tanks you can absorb all the turret damage. And it's just unnecessary, right? Where the health bar was, even if they all stood there, all four, the turret would have gone down. It's easy to poke as Ezreal. We've already seen how great Soul is at getting the uh, arcane shift away from important engagement CCs. They just basically pass over a bonus kill as Dardoch, optimistic man, to think he's going to catch Soul. And they, not only do they pass over a bonus kill, but they pass over map control when normally Kong Du Monster had put in a fair bit of resources, lost a fair bit of help going for this siege, and now they can't go back on it. And this is academic. Cool how they're coming from two flanks as well, guaranteed to get one sort of displacement. They would have wanted more kills. Actually a good uh, ultimate from Ole, just to try and delay some of the damage. Might have been two kills there rather than just the single, but they get the objective, they get the kill. Nice stuff from Kongdu. And now this game once again is all tied up. Only really the Infernal Drake banking is what Immortals have to show for what was a really nice first 10 to 15 minutes for them. Sure agree on that one. It was a solid lead for them. The laning phase, of course, still had Two gone levels. the way of the Koreans. But yeah, you're seeing Flame, after the early pressure he got off of Dardoch, has continued to do quite a bit better than Roach. A lot of that being that Roach has very aggressively looked for TP flanks, and for the most part, they haven't really found their mark. So it's additionally helped Flame because he's he's been more conservative with his teleport. And back in the day, you know, when Flame was putting out the Flame Horizons, even before perhaps he was they were named such, it was always a meanwhile of Flame story. He'd be holding the wave at the second turret, just getting a massive CS lead. The enemy team would struggle to close out the game. Meanwhile, Flame 100 CS advantage. Meanwhile, Flame, while the ter while the teleports haven't come up much for Roach, two thirds of the way to the Flame Horizon and then some, it's about 56 CS, yes, was about 64 a second ago. So yeah. Flame has used that time wisely. He's been more conservative with his TPs, once punished in the bot lane very early, but otherwise to his benefit. And unkillable Maokai is online, his Guardian yeah. Angel is already complete.
Yeah, he is nigh invincible, but he's got to be able to block the damage up from the rest of the team. In that prior team fight, the 5v4, you've got to point out, Pobotzer got caught out, was just demolished, despite the fact that Flame was there to try to defend him. And Kongju Monster have done very well with target selection, knowing how much they've been able to actually push in and look for a backliner, land the skill shots there, and that's been solid for them. Well, no one wants to enter the Maokai lane particularly. Roach will do just fine, but obviously not going to be doing any chip damage on this massive Maokai. Game is still suddenly in a position where Kongdu are feeling comfortable. They've won the last pressure battle. They've got a couple of picks. Soon to be, you'd have to imagine, either the Mortal Reminder or the Lord Dominic's onto Soul, who has the QSS as well. Yep. Not that he's needed it before, his Edge. We're going to find a stun under Dardock. Ole's coming. Ashro not quite going to land. Can't blame Cody for that one. A good dodge by Edge, to be fair. And here comes the re-engage. Roach is in. Wants to kill off Dardock. Plenty of damage up with their low health on the tank. Trying to run away. Still going to get rooted. Satchel gets him out, but still, still gets the kill. Crucially onto Cody's son. Marksman down. That's going to be two kills easily. Soul once again getting all the kills that he needs. And that's going to be a much easier fair attempt. Five versus three. Can Immortals really stop this? Uh, to say, unfortunately, Cody Sun actually did find himself in no man's land, not in behind tanks. Baron is low. Here's the attempt, and it's going to be secured there by Punch. The flash ball, they picked oh. off Poe Belter, and yet again, it's Immortals hoping they can stop something on a power play and losing Poe Belter for that. Root's going to land, means maybe a bit more. Can they? Yes, they can. There's Ole going down, and just trying to stop Baron 3v5 without a jungler. They give up two kills and more map control. And you just hate to use the term throw, overuse, but Cody Sun in complete no man's land as yep. Ash. You don't have the chance to have those sort of positioning mistakes. And the reason why you're vindicating calling a throw is this game was so line ball, and suddenly the base is in tatters for Immortals. Yeah, honestly, it's pretty rough. I'm a bit dazed how much they managed to throw this game away. It was a reasonable lead for them, but not able to do much more. And the story continues of late game Korean shot calling. And yes, you can give excuses to Immortals. And as well, Liquid, who signed the roster together much more recently. Kongdu Monster, probably the most well-rehearsed team at this tournament. I think unquestionably so, but still a great fight for them. Catching and this you just one have out. to watch Ash here. Walking through, they're like, OK, let's get the pick onto Edge. Nice Ash nice arrow. Cube. But it, uh, Edge's moves here with the Q movement speed are actually really dapper. But Maokai looks for a teleport. And that means that cody Sun is completely stuck with no front line. Darduk was DPSed out first basically assassinated by multiple members who turn on him. Whether it's completely Cody Sun's fault or the rest of the team, the engage just didn't make sense. A lot of that was actually on Flame, looking at him in the scoreboard. He actually had started teleport, but didn't actually complete the yep. channel. So he was not part of that fight at all. As well, Bo Walter was not in that fight until after it was over either. So they ended up finding themselves in a 3v5. Dardock now on the wrong side of the tracks here. Edge below him, punch above. I don't know if he has a satchel to run to. He's going to hope he can get out. There's the flash, and he's not going to go for the plant. He's instead going to get rooted up by a Cougar. Gets a bit of a shield, but look at all the damage coming towards him. But snakes away. Nicely played. Dardock escaping with his life, not really burning more than his flash. But maybe, maybe, maybe fairest to generalize the throw to just Immortals not being on the same yeah. wavelength. Cody Sun ending up completely out of position. But oh, the punishment is so severe. Yes, the punishment is very severe here in this one. Five and a half thousand gold lead. It is still the makings of a comeback can happen. It's not out of reach entirely, but there should be quite a bit more that Kongdu Monster can gain here. The Siege for the bottom lane inhibitor turret. Going to be a pretty easy one. Ulti's going to catch only the support. Not a great target. There's a knockback onto Flame. He's not part of this fight anymore. Roach still tanky in the front line, and the Siege can continue. So putting out plenty of damage there. Flame threatens, can't get a lot done though. Tack it under the wall there by Roach. And there we go, the frontliners in the mix yet again. Punch is going to tunnel away. Roach going to buy some time. Goober out of man at this point, so can't support much more. But Ole, not much to do himself anyway. Can't do monster. Looks like they will wait for the next wave and continue the siege. Okay, we'll have to wait to see the Baron buff duration. Well, it's currently selected on Maokai, so can't tell. But it must be towards the tail end. Feeling very low. Finds a stun, finds the kill on the inhibitor itself. And Mortals just cannot find their way into a team fight. Only really one major ultimate available. That's Pobelt, but he is out of mana here. And it looks like Mortals going to have to reset, get their mana pool back up. Pobelt runs for that. We'll see a bit more later. One poor macro decision by Immortals. Cody Sun caught, led to Baron, led to multiple turrets. About four, if I'm going to guess. Can't remember exactly what was still intact at that point in the game, but two inhibitors and a Baron is. Uh, yeah. is a lot given how close this game was. Immortals kept inching ahead, inching ahead. They even had the late game team fighting yep. freak. They even had the double Infernal. Yeah. 
The one macro mistake, and suddenly, Kongdo Monster slides through them. Exactly. Immortals have had some good choices, such as the second Drake take with the TP yep. advantage. They knew, even though the gold was very close together, that Kongdo Monster was going to be fighting for it. Played that situation well, but several 4v5s and 3v5s they opted into. And now Pobelter, who flashes away and might just survive it, has to dodge Ooh. and will do so. So at least that is a trade of some somewhat. But the Siege will continue still healthy enough, lands a lot of folks. Look at that. That is a couple of skill shots of Cody Suns at 130 HP. Just hard tank up this inner turret. Remember, there is super minions pushing into both bot and mid. Roach this time is with teleport in the bot side. Maokai, can Flame really afford to not be in front of his front line? If, if anyone gets assassinated, damage dealer, then he needs to be that sole front line. He's still unkillable, but his damage oh, dealers need to the They land the arrow. This, oh, instant cleanse. Nicely played by Edge. That could have been actually a pickoff. Ole, going to land a double ulti. Maybe this is the fight. Immortals need this desperately. Can they find something? Clutch, going to go for the knockout of Cody Sun. Look at the damage I put on to poor Ash. Has to flash away and still goes down to Edge. One pick up there and a nice juke by Soul. Gets away from the shockwave. Still playing immaculately here. Cannot go down. Already the one for zero. Looking for a bit more. Roach Tanky pulls Flame back into the team. That'll make it a two after his Guardian Angel pops. This should still be a follow-up kill. Shouldn't be too hard. There's the pickup on a Flame Soul. Another one on this. Ezreal playing so well. Another tackle makes Ole go down. Kill credit goes to Punch. Why not for him? 10 to 3. Turrets going down. Game one, a 35 minute affair, gonna go to Kongdu Monster, and they are one game away from their second straight tournament final as the Nexus goes down. 1-0, one, one more to go, Kongdu Monster. So situational awareness in that last team fight was immaculate. This guy is top percentage.